In today's video, I'm going to be showing you on how you can get this super cool freezing effect. So before I get started on how you can make this, I'm just going to show you how it works. So I'm just going to walk around a bit. What I've done is set this on the timer, and as you can see, I've now got this frozen effect, and I can't move. Yes, I'm still animated, but I'm frozen, and then after these particles, and then I think I set it after 20 seconds, it's going to unfreeze me. So let's give it a couple more seconds. Of course, all of these particles, that noise effect you heard, and the size of the ice is all customizable. And there you go. I'm now on frozen and can act as normal. So I think this is a super cool useful module you can have. And if you want any help on inserting it, I recommend you follow the video from now on. Okay, so first of all, we now need to download the 3 model from the Roblox toolbox. I'm going to leave a link to this module down below. And all you need to do is scroll down to the description and head to this link. And then when you're here, you just have to click on get model. Then it's going to load a bit. And then once you have this, you can return over to studio. Once you're in studio, you can head over to toolbox, then head over to my inventory, which is over here, and then make sure it's on my models and then click on the freeze module. Okay. And then just click okay, because of course it is a module script. And then I'm just going to put mine in service script service for now, but you can put yours wherever you want. And now you're going to be able to freeze the player. Now, as you can see, inside of Freezer module, we have a ton of configuration. So we have local anchor if not moving. If the target barely moves or not moving at all, blah, 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 then the ice layer will be anchored, making the target stay in place. So I'd turn this to true personally, although we can experiment with this. It's just a super cool customizable module. So you also have your ice settings here, so you can make the ice super thick. And you can also change the texture, the color. For me, the sounds work fine and everything is looking good on the default settings. Now let's make it so that when the player joins, they get frozen. So we're going to insert a new script into server script service. And then we're going to drop a line and then we're going to say game dot players dot player added connect function. And then we're going to get the player who joined from the parameters. And then we now need to detect when their character spawns in. So player on oh nope player dot character added connect function. And now this function will only run when the character is added. And then we need to import the freeze module. So we can say local freeze module equals. And then we're going to say require script dot parent dot freeze module. And now from here we can say freeze module dot threes. And then we can obviously get the character. We can do this by getting it from the parameter here. Oops, let's just say cut char. And then we can give in a duration for how long we want the character to be frozen for. And let's just set it for five settings. Now let's set this to anchor if not moving to false and see what happens. So we're going to click on play. We're spawning in. And as you can see, we're frozen straight away. Now we can't move. And then once we're unfrozen, it works. However, let's just give us five minutes. So we're going to wait five seconds before we get frozen. And then we're going to join into the game here. Then we're going to move off. And then we're going to keep walking. And as you can see, I'm frozen in place. Now let's experiment with anchor if not moving to become true. Okay, and now that is true. And let's walk around. Okay, we're going to walk forwards here, wait our 5 seconds, and as you can see, we're still going to be uh, frozen in this lovely position, and then we can walk again. Also, we can customize all of these um, variables here. So let's make this to be 5 for the ice size. So now this is going to be some really cubey thick ice, so I imagine I've just been out in the winter for a very long time. And I'm returning now, you can see. Yeah, the ice is going to be massive. You can see my little ice ground in there. Um, so I think the default is quite nice. One will be, of course, as big as the target. Then we can change the name. So instead of being ice, we could have it be ice cubes. I don't think that's a big deal. I think that's just so if you wanted to reference it in the Explorer. Then we can change the color. So let's say we want it to be some... Hmm. Let's go for some red ice. Okay, I've been bleeding quite a lot. Um, there we go. We're gonna we can change the material to be smooth plastic or maybe glass and Then now let's give it another go and in fact instead of being just ice you could probably turn this into stone So we're now going to be frozen inside of our new model. You ready? 
Oh, I forgot to change the size. That's a bit silly for me. But let's actually try making this almost stone-like. So let's just try that one more time so we can actually see the effects. So we're going to walk off here and then eventually... <laughs> there you go. You can see we have... I like that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but let's try it with some rock, okay? So if we set the eye size to be default and change the name to be rock... Then let's make the color a maybe beigey color. Then let's set the transparency to be a lot lower. So it's not as transparent. And then let's set the material to be rock. And then now let's see how this looks like. So we're going to join into the game. And let's walk around for a bit. Okay. And then hopefully. Oh, okay. That is, that's an interesting one. Of course, the ice is still quite thick. Okay, so I like the customization here, but let's just go back to what we had at the beginning. So I'm just going to hold Control Z, and let's now make it so that when a user steps on a piece of ice, they're frozen. So I'm going to make a part around this, just like this. So it's covering the ice nice and precisely. Then I'm going to set the transparency to one. I'm going to anchor it. And I'm going to make it canker light to false so people can move through this part. Then what we're going to do is we're going to rename it to ice spike detector. And now when someone steps on this, which we can do through here. So we're going to say game.workspace the ice spike detector dot touched connect function. And then we're going to get what touched it. So we could say um, touched part. Now what we're going to do is see if a humanoid is found in this part. And it's really important that we find if there's a humanoid just so we know if it's a player. So a humanoid only a player will have. So we're going to say local humanoid equals and then touch part dot parent find first child. And here we're going to put humanoid with a capital H. Now we're going to check if the humanoid exists. And we can do this by saying if humanoid then now the reason we're using if humanoid is because if we don't specify if we want it to be true or false it will presume it is true so if humanoid does exist so if we've successfully found the humanoid this means that a player exists and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the character so we're going to say touch part dot parent and then just before this i coded this in a bit of a weird way we can say freeze module dot freeze then in here we can put the touch part dot parent and then we're going to give a duration of five seconds. So if they touch these parts, they'll have a time penalty of five seconds. Now let's just give this a go. Okay, this is looking fantastic. No errors in the, no errors in the script and we're going to touch this part. And there you go, we've been frozen. It looks like my eye spikes aren't perfectly anchored. Oh. But you see, there's a bit of a problem. I literally cannot escape this because as soon as I try to move, it freezes me. So we're going to add something that's called a debounce, okay? So now when people click on buttons on websites, sometimes they add a debounce to stop people from spamming buttons and making them do multiple requests. So let's create the debounce variable and we're going to say local debounce equals false. Now, let's say when someone touches the part, they can only run the code beneath it if debounce equals equals false. Then in here, we can paste our code from previously. And now once the humanoid is freezed, we're going to say debounce equals true. So you can now see if it were to be touched again, the debounce will be set to false. Now, you need to be a little bit careful because as it's running on the server, it's going to have a debounce globally. So it's really important that you take that into consideration. Now, once we have this code done, we can wait, let's just say six seconds, and then we're going to set debounce to false. So as soon as they touch the part, it's going to set debounce to true. So this function or this these lines of code can't be ran again. And then it's going to wait six seconds. So if the duration that they're frozen for is five seconds, they'll have one second to escape. So maybe let's just up that to seven seconds. And then the debounce will be set to false. So this code can be run again. Now let's head into the game and give it a quick go. Okay, we're loaded in. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to find our ice spikes. We're going to walk up. Okay, we're frozen. Okay. And now let's see. As you can see, I have to... Okay, I was a bit slow there. Hold on. But as you can see, I can now escape. So, I can run away and be hidden. And then I'm here. And normally, if I was touching this, I'd be immediately frozen. But I have the debounce time. Which I think is super useful. So I hope you found this tutorial simple and useful and effective. There you go, we have the three uh, useful words. And if you have any questions about this, you can join our Discord down below where you can ask any questions and we can help you out with that. And once again, a massive shout out to the person who created this module script because obviously without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. They should be attached on the creator of the model. And that's all for me. Thank you for tuning in and bye bye.